is Ryan and Michelle, and welcome to the Celebrate Marriage Cast, where we hope to restore and reclaim godly marriages through honest and real conversations. Welcome to episode 15 and happy new year. We are Michelle and Ryan, and it is so great to be here with you today. And we are so honored to have some very special guests with us because we know that it's a new year and you want to have an awesome marriage. So we have a special treat for you today. We have Dr. Kim and Nancy Kimberlein. They live in Oklahoma City and have been married for 53 years. They actually met at a blind date in college. Incredible. They have two married adult children and five amazing grandchildren. Dr. Kim has been a Christian counselor working with couples and families for over 40 years. He's a co-founder of Awesome Marriage, which connects with over 300,000 people every week through social media, the Awesome Marriage podcast, YouTube vlogs and shorts, Uversion rating plans, marriage resources, webinars, seminars, Awesome Marriage University, and the awesomemarriage.com website. Dr. Kim and Nat, Nancy are passionate about helping couples have the marriage that God designed especially for them. And they are also the authors of the brand new book, Love, Intimacy, and Sex in the Second Half. Welcome to our show, you guys. Thanks. 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 It's good so good to be, to be here. It's, yeah. I'm excited about what you guys are doing. And obviously, anybody that loves uh, helping people with marriage, we love. So we're so yeah. excited to get to know you guys and love what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, just like Michelle said, thank you. I'm so grateful for technology that we're able to, oh, to yeah. connect with you yes. guys. It's so great. And and just on a side note, I want to start with just, just saying thank you for, for what you guys are doing in your ministry. It's had tremendous impact on me in our marriage. I, I yeah. connected with you guys a few years ago through version through a, a Bible yes. Um, plan uh, on marriage, and then proceeded to to subscribe to your your daily one thing email, which is absolutely fantastic. And so, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, you know, before we get started, to both of you guys for for your for your ministry and and what it's done for us. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. It's it's amazing what God's done. If twelve years ago I would have thought we'd be here, I'd thought. It'd have to be a miracle, and I guess it is because yeah. God's hand's been all over it, and that's uh, it's it's just been fun to watch what God has done, and to be uh, be used by Him is um, probably the greatest gift we could have as a couple. That's right. Yeah, that's so great. For sure. So, tell us a yeah. little bit about your ministry, about Awesome Marriage, what it is, and and really what sure. you guys hope to 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 accomplish. Well, it started out twelve years ago as a Facebook page. Um, there was a, a church we were in, Life Church, and there was what was called. We had an online deal going uh, long before church online became kind of a deal. They were getting so many questions about marriage, and I was helping with that. And so, therefore, we sat around one day and said, "We need to do something just specifically so marriage." And that was when Facebook was re- was it wasn't new, but you know, it wasn't what it sure. is today, and you could reach so many people so easily. Set up a Facebook page. I uh, got a little pushback because. People are also using that to uh, connect with old boyfriends and girlfriends. We thought, <laughs> that's where we need to be. And, yeah. and so we did. And so it has evolved to that to now where we, you kind of mentioned some of the things, the one thing, email or podcast, we have resources. Uh, we pray for people. I think one thing that makes us unique, and not that others aren't doing, but we really, our, our care team is amazing, and they really get involved with couples. We have resources. Somebody comes with us with a problem, and we find the resources for them. We pray mm-hmm. for them. So we really want to help people in general, the big picture, but also the individuals mm-hmm. that come that come to us. And so um, we now have a Spanish ministry too. A lot of our resources are in Spanish now, cool. and so that that's exciting uh, as we've reached into to that group. And so we have a team of about twelve people now. Uh, it wow. started out with me, Nancy, it ta- and then we. Uh, kind of added, uh, we had a guy that came on and really helped us grow to the next level. And we've got an amazing team of people. They're all virtual. They're all over the United okay. States. And uh, it's worked out really, really well. Again, technology has allowed us to do something yeah. that we couldn't have done without it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. So, you know, as we start our show, we're, we're going to be jumping into your, to your book, um, uh, Love, Intimacy, and Sex in the Second Half. And first of all, 
I want to say just thank you for for writing this. It's it's literally like you invited us into like your kitchen table as you guys mm-hmm. were having a conversation. So uh, we, <laughs> yeah, very vulnerable too yeah, and transparent yeah. with the stories. Yeah. So we what? Got to be honest to help people. Yeah. 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 And I I really appreciate that. And and really, it's it. It, it was. It was a conversation between the two of you. And, and it's, it, it was. It was very honest, very real. And we really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it was the first thing we've done together like that. And we've done other things together, but not written a book together. And so it was it's really fun as we would just sit and it was recorded, you know, so much of the dialogue that's in it. And uh, it, was, it was a great experience for us. We talked about things that, a lot of things we hadn't talked about in a long time. That's true. You know, and it was so it's fun to do, and then it's it's um, exciting to see what God's doing with it right now. Yeah, yeah. So what what was the reason for writing the book? Like, why why was it so important to to both of you to write it? You well, wanna... actually, we saw a lot of people that were um, oh, I don't know, fifty years and and up who were struggling. I mean, the kids were either gone or on their way out. And they just didn't know how to create a life together anymore, you know. And so we wanted to help people recapture that, see the importance of all these things that we've talked about in the book, intimacy, romance, et cetera, and see if we couldn't help people get on track again where God wants their marriage to be. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> you know, hope is that people will— read it as they're getting approaching that time of empty nest and Mm -hmm. because i think a lot of couples do for some reason put their marriage on a back burner while they're raising kids so to speak and so you know you don't you just have that marriage just doesn't coast i mean you you gotta continue to invest in it and so when you let it kind of just exist together for a while and the kids leave and you look at each other and you think you know what's your name not that extreme but you know it's it's kind of like right like we didn't do what we need to do and it's not too late and so yeah. Yeah. my hope, I think our hope for the book is that couples, as they begin approaching that time, will look at it. Hey, what do we need to do? We've got three years, four years, five years before the last child leaves. And that the couples that are in it, and like Nancy said, are struggling to know there are some answers. You know, you don't yeah. have to continue to struggle. You can, for us, it's been, it's just been a great time of life. And oh, yeah. It's it, the best. It, it really is. We love, we love, raise, we loved every season. We sure. loved raising kids. Yeah. We love the five years before kids, and we love this season. And so it's, uh, but it, it gives you, you have more time and, you know, you know, we don't have to come home and help people home work. Uh, we don't have a pet now, so we don't have to come home and feed <laughs> the pet. Uh, really, so, it's just us. Yeah, yeah, we just have a lot yeah. of flexibility. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot of time together, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so good. I'm, I, I'm in the finance field. And yeah. and we see this so many people and so many people that you know when they retire, it's like they lose their identity and they don't know what to do. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. and so Absolutely. like this this book kind of kind of hit home on a, on a few different levels of just of of speaking into that with your marriage and and I think a lot of people run into that in their marriage that they retire they don't know what to do with themselves they don't uh, yeah. you know and so I I it, it's such a great resource. That's yeah, interesting it, coming from that perspective, Ryan, of, 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 that you do see something with being a financial, helping people with finances, that that's, it is. And that's, it's just so sad when you see that happen mm-hmm. because yeah. um, they've usually got more time. Hopefully, they've yeah. got the money, uh, you know, to at least live right. comfortably. And, right. and you want to do that together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and we've said it here that you're never just staying in one direction. You're either going forward or backwards. You're growing or you're, or you're dying. So I appreciate what you said about really helping people to be intentional with their marriage in the first half and the second half, that it does take work and it does take intentionality. It's not something that just happens. I think you said that awesome marriages require work and yeah. attention. So, um, you see. You had said something very, it was just in the very beginning of the book that your love for Dr. Kim looks different now than it did 20 years ago, 15, 10, and even five years ago. Can you just expand on a little bit of that, what you meant by it and what that looks like for your your marriage? Sure, you bet. Um, well, when we started out, the first five years were pretty hard and um I think what happened was we were in lust and not in love. Sure. And uh, we, you know, we kind of 
made it through those first five, seven years uh, with a little help uh, from professional counseling. And then, you know, the kids came, and that was a, a different level of, of commitment to our marriage. And and then as they moved out and dealing with the teen years, that was just, you know, solidified our relationship instead of pulling us apart, which it can do. And then as we've grown older, I mean, I can really see a difference. You know, they say as you get older, time speeds up. Yes. And I can really see that happening in our marriage where last year wasn't near as good as this year, you know, uh, or yeah. uh, we just, you just fall more in love, you know, yeah. you have the time and you realize, you know, that you may not have more than 25 more years, so you better make the best of it now. And yeah. It really yeah. is a more than a commitment. Yeah, you know. it puts things in perspective then, I suppose, yes, when you start does. to look at the time and how fast things go. Right. Right. I, I really appreciate what you said there, just that you know him in such a deeper way. And I think, you know, Ryan and I, we just celebrated 12 years in the fall and November, but I can say that as we get to know each other and go through trials, oh my goodness, um, it just like deepens that love that you have. Thank and God. I love what you said about your love just being so much stronger. It's so beautiful. It Thank is. You for that. It's really, yeah. really unique now. That's great. Yeah, I think yeah. that when we, I think the hard times, which we all hate when we're going through, but when you look back, if you go through them together and let God walk with you through it, you learn and you're stronger. And and I, the thing that that Nancy and I both hate to see is when couples get married and they hit these hard points and they just give up because mm. yeah. we could have given up a bunch Lots of times, of times. and yeah. and yeah. it's persevering through that to get to where we are now for we're, we're all that's worth it you know wow. and, yeah. and marriage people look at us sometimes and say oh you've always been this way and we haven't we no. can, we can really fight good i mean we can really <laughs> have some dandies and we've learned but that's that, not so much anymore no i think it no i think we didn't choose our battles well mm -hmm. i think we give a lot, each other a lot more grace now than we did mm -hmm. in the early years i think it's you just go so much better yeah, you go through the early years. You're still trying to kind of change them a little bit, yeah. you know. You know, God, I, you did a pretty good job, but I can I can make it a little bit better if she'll just do what I tell her to do, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think you finally yeah. realize now that you can't be someone's Holy Spirit. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. And one thing that I think That's we've good. learned is that God has never done anything in either one of our lives that wasn't good for us right. and the other person in our marriage, mm -hmm. all of it. And so yeah. wow. when you can finally trust him to make the changes in each of us that he wants to make, it's going to be good for your marriage. Right. And I think yeah. God just taught us things, don't you, just along oh, the journey? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hope our listeners are hearing what you said that, you know, even in the midst of trials that— to go through that together, it strengthens your marriage. And I feel like what you said was just so hope-giving. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so good. That was yeah, so good. That's what we want. Yeah. Just, you yeah. know, we've made a commitment, uh, but we've also gone deeper. And most marriages, you need to realize that when you stood before God, it was a covenant. It wasn't yeah. only a commitment. It was a covenant. Mm -hmm. And a covenant can't easily be broken. I'm not saying there aren't times that there needs to be broken or separation, but that would be extreme. Yeah. 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 Such good. Yeah. Such mm -hmm. good wisdom there. And so we're going to jump into this and, and kind of break this up uh, with, with the book. Uh, so we, we've got, we've got love, intimacy, and, and sex, and, and we've got a, a, a question from each kind of section of the book. So uh, on the love part, this is a, a an interesting, there, there was such a beautiful picture painted of leadership in marriage. And, and, and I think it's something that often goes wrong. Um, you know, there's, there's, you, you had given an example of work leadership and home leadership and, and there being a difference. Sometimes it's not always done that way, but there, there was just this beautiful picture that I'd, I'd love for, for both of you to just kind of expand on of, of a husband and wife and what that looks like in a marriage. Yeah, I think um, I think it's hard to lead. I think most guys, uh, you know, when you're in premarital counseling or something like that, and the guy says, "Well, the husband needs to be the leader," and most of us don't. And I think what you brought up there, Ryan, is that you know I think a lot of guys think, "Okay, you're successful in your work, and so you lead at work like you do at home." 
but she's not my employee. You know, they just, <laughs> right. <laughs> just and I like as a counselor, I can't come home and counsel mm-hmm. her and say, you know, if you do this, your life would be better. So you have to really, I think leading is really just modeling after Jesus and being a servant. And that in itself is hard to do. You know, when Jesus said he came to serve, not to to be served, to give his his life away. Um, and, and so he says that in Matthew. I mean, that's, I think that's the the model he has for us as leaders. And I, what I've seen in our marriage, when I'm in tune with the Lord and I'm leading as a servant the way God wants me to lead, then it, yeah, it helps you, I, right? Absolutely. I mean, when for a long time I fought the leadership, you know, I I wanted it. I don't know. It was just more like a competition, and. Um, once I finally let go and realized this is God's plan, I want him to lead. And it doesn't mean I'm not a leader too, but I mean, yeah. I want him to be the head of the home. You know, that was God's plan. And, you know, it sounds corny, but I feel like I'm the heart of the home, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I don't know. It's just once you make that decision to allow your husband to be the leader, it's so much better. Yeah, and I think when you when you lead as a servant, it, it's so different. Mm-hmm. And I think that's hard for us that's as guys right. to do, you know, because we're supposed to be all these things that, that our culture tells us to be. And yet that really doesn't work in a marriage. Yeah. It, it's yeah. serving each other. And, and I think, too, we're, when Nancy knows if we have a situation that we're facing and we have to make a decision, then she knows that I've prayed about it. And we've prayed about it together. We've talked it through together that she trusts my decision in those mm-hmm. things. If you know, if we're, usually we come to the same decision. Yeah. But every once in a while we'll be a little off and, and I think that trust is because I have listened mm-hmm. to her and I have prayed about it. And I wasn't very good about that at all in the early years of marriage. It was kinda like I know best and I'm yeah. gonna do it. You know, and with when you are as competitive as we are with each other, that didn't work very well. It just didn't yeah, I, I I think that happens so often. Of you know, we we hear that a lot. Of you know, the men need to be spiritual leaders, and they they need to lead the home. But it's it's almost like with an iron fist of mm-hmm. like we have to do yeah. it this way, and then it leads to 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 tension. It leads to conflict. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, it, and you just, um, I think I think for guys that are listening and they're going ah. Maybe I haven't done the right. It's not too late right. to get back mm-hmm. on the right track and to, to kind of start things over. And and if you feel like you've hurt your spouse in any way, to, to be able to sit down with her and tell her that you're sorry. And from today forward, uh, I'm not going to knowingly hurt you again. And how can I protect you? What what can I do for you? Begin to just, you can turn it around. That's it's truth. never too late. And yeah. I've seen people... In counseling, I've worked with a couple, one couple that I love, and he was probably as strong a narcissist I've ever worked with. And finally, he just turned it all over to God, and it totally changed him. It changed mm-hmm. their life. Wow. Uh, in fact, we're getting ready to do a podcast series with them the first of the year wow, to tell cool. their story of what of wow. what God does. And so seeing them go through that, I know that God can turn anything around in a marriage with this. And if you don't think you can be a leader like Christ leads, I promise you, you can. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you made it clear in the book, too. It doesn't mean that the wife's role is less or that mm. my opinion is less valuable. I'm pretty determined and I see myself as a leader, too. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I still look to you to lead mm. our house, but you do that in a very respectful way. Like you said, it's not an iron fist, like, Michelle, you will do this. You know, yeah. I'm, I've never felt like you have been, you know, like domineering or anything in your leadership is a very, yeah, it's a servant leadership. It's humble and kind and gentle. Yeah. 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 And it's really a sweet part of a relationship if you can achieve that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think it makes, I think it helps when I'm do that well. I think you feel safer, more I secure. Do. You, you know, that you know I'm there to do anything I can right. for you, to protect you and to love yeah. you and care for you. And, and I think that, I think that's what mm-hmm. the heart of a woman really wants. From her husband, and it's yeah. and you're right, Michelle. It is not a lesser than role. It is no, you know, the role of the helper. And there's a I can't remember what psalm it is, but it says God 
I looked to the hills for my help. And God is my helper. I can't remember exactly. But, but you know, if God's a, if God's a helper, that's a pretty good role. Yeah. yeah. To have. Yeah. 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 Very that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's a great, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great point. Well, looking at the second part of the book on intimacy, you talk about five different types of intimacy in the book. And one of those that you said most couples probably scored the lowest on is spiritual intimacy. So we thought it'd be good to talk about that. Why is it, you know, what is it and why is it important in your relationship, that spiritual intimacy? Well, I guess I was the one that kind of sought that out early. Um I got involved in a ladies' Bible study, and I realized that walking with God, being in His Word and in prayer every day made a huge difference in my life, and it made, therefore, in our marriage. As a matter of fact, when I was off in the summer, my kids would go, when are you going back to Bible study? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it really made that big of a difference in my life, and so with— that is such a neat part of our relationship now is that we've been able to grow spiritually together. Of course, it's always a personal start out. You know, you've got to have that personal relationship with Christ. But when you start mm-hmm. growing, you can intermingle that within your marriage and really make it so much richer. Sure. Yeah, I've always loved, you know, in the first part of Genesis when before the fall and, and there's this picture of Adam mm-hmm. and Eve in God and and Adam and Eve are naked and unashamed, which means they're vulnerable, they're open, you know, they're just transparent with each other. And then mm-hmm. God comes to spend time with them every day. And I think that what this is what God wants with and I think sure. through Christ we can have that where mm-hmm. we are still the three of us with husband and wife and God at the center. And when we do that, it makes such a difference. And I think most guys uh, feel like their wives are more spiritual than them, honestly. Because uh, I think wives are better about getting in Bible studies. You certainly did that. And and so I think sometimes we feel inadequate, but I think we just have to trust God if He wants us mm-hmm. to join together spiritually. And, and it's not a performance. It's really probably that some of the times that I stumbled around the most and maybe most vulnerable or whatever, some of the times that drew us closer to each other and to God. And so I think it's um, having your individual relationship, like Nancy said, and then together. You know, we love, you know, I think one of the best things, um, the YouVersion app has been so good oh, yeah. for us mm-hmm. and for couples because there's reading plans. I just, in counseling, I tell couples, read the Bible. And, you know, I, somebody come back and said, well, I started in Leviticus and I'm confused. And I said, <laughs> bet, you're, bet you're confused. You know? It's so easy now. And, and now I mean, it's just, it yeah, put a topic in, you get a reading plan and you can do it together. Yeah. Uh, we, we do it every night together. Yeah. You know, we find a reading plan and do it together. And then we, yeah. um, we read through the Bible together during the year. We don't sit down and read together. Usually we do that in our morning yeah. devotionals, but we're reading the same thing. And so, if we have a question or something, we can talk about it, interact on it. And it's just something about being in God's Word that is really special. And, yeah. and so I think that's one of the things that um, there's so many good ways to do that. Now, Bible Project's sure. another thing that we love and what they are doing. And I mean, I, I went to seminary, and I've, I'm learning things from that's the right. from the mm-hmm. Bible Project. Mm-hmm. They're so good about how they present the different things in the Bible. So I mean you don't even have to be but a baby Christian and you can or not even a Christian and you can start watching, you know, you go to U version or go to Bible project and you can get hooked up with incredible amounts of information and knowledge and Mm -hmm. wisdom. Yeah. That's so great. That's we should check out the Bible project. I feel like I've heard good things about it. And then I saw that yeah in your book too. It's great. That's yeah. cool. There was a, a quote in your book. Um, I think, Dr. Kim, maybe you had written this. You had said that um, some people think that a spiritual you know, relationship, spiritual intimacy with God is personal, private. And then you said it is, but developing spiritual intimacy together doesn't take away from your own spiritual life. It enhances it. And I thought that was a really good point. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I think it does. It's just a, it's, it's a different experience when I'm just, when I do my quiet time in the morning with me and God, and then when Nancy and I do it in the evening, it's just something about reading his word together, sharing it, maybe talking about if there's questions there to ask. There's something about sure. hearing each other's perspective yeah. on what we've read, 
what did God say to you? And sometimes God will say something to Nancy that I thought, wow, sure. I'm so glad he told you. I didn't get that. And that was so cool, you know, yeah. until you learn and yeah. grow together. Well, that's you, spiritual sharing. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Do you do other spiritual habits together too then? You pray together? Mm-hmm. We do pray together. That uh, We started on our wedding night because she said, let's pray. And I thought, okay. <laughs> you know, what I had in mind. But, uh, I love that but, story when I read it in the book. I thought that was so yeah, cool. Yeah, she had a, a mentor lady that had told her how important it was. No, for it was a pastor. A pastor told her how important it was to pray together. And so we did. And honestly, we were thinking about this, I guess, when writing the book, that we probably prayed together 99% of the nights of our marriage. And so, so I did some math, and we're approaching 20,000 nights of praying together. And wow. wow. That's not to— Sometimes get, it was through clenched teeth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. When, you, when you're angry yeah. at each other and you go, well, we're still supposed to pray, you know, and yeah. so— <laughs> <laughs> but but it turns out better. Yeah, I was I think, say, it's yeah, very I think, hard to pray when you're angry, though. It is. It it is. It's it is. Uh, it, it's short and quick. And <laughs> I think I think what what I see looking back, whether it was whatever we're dealing with with kids or raising kids or something in our marriage, that consistency mm-hmm. of praying together has made a difference. Yeah, yeah. it's made yeah. a difference. It connected us with God day after day after day. You know, sometimes the next day, I probably wouldn't even remember what. We prayed, sure. but it well, was but consistency. Well, we pray now like if we hear a prayer request on the radio or something, sure. you know, we'll, we'll both, you know, pray. And so we're just praying kind of all day. Yeah, yeah we're, Nancy's been really good about it. if we know something or somebody, maybe we're in the car and somebody, she finds out about something. And we just have learned to just pray when the opportunity mm-hmm. comes yeah. up. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, it just is another way of keeping God in the middle. and. Mm-hmm. And then I think the other thing that we have always been in church, um, Nancy grew up Episcopal and I grew up Methodist. And so well, the first, I don't know, a few months of our marriage, we'd go to Episcopal church one week, a mess of this the next. And we finally, this church we'd pass every week. We thought, well, let's, we were running late, go there one day. And so we stayed in that church for probably yeah, long time. 15 years, 16 mm-hmm. years, something like that. And so I think it's been important for us to be uh, consistent in that. And I think it was important for our kids as we grew up. Um, as teenagers, we bribed them. It's like we're going to lunch, and if you go to church, you get to go to lunch with us. And, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> they they see the value in that yeah. now with their kids. But uh, yeah, I think that the church and being a part of a community. We had a pastor when we were first married; those first years that really invested in us. He'd hang out with us and come to our house and. He loved on us, and I think he had a, a huge impact on oh, us yeah. in the early part of our marriage. And so just being that, that community helps grow in that area, too. Yeah. yeah. That's so great. And we found that we we kind of do that continual conversation with praying, too. We do a lot yeah. of that in the car, especially if, gosh, um, I lost my father to a heart attack. And it just anytime I see an ambulance go by for whatever, mm. I mean, you never know what it is, but my heart just kind of like— drops a little bit or, you know, like just stops. And we just pray as a family. Anytime we see an ambulance, anytime we see a helicopter, we pray for, you know, just, just pray right then. Or yeah, like you said, if you hear a prayer request, especially on social media, when people say asking for prayer and people say, oh, pray, I'll pray. Well, I mean, if I don't pray right then, I'm going to forget, you know, my, right. I'm moving on. So yeah. if I say, I'm praying for you, I am praying for you right then and there because I, I can't, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll just, you know, squirrel and I'll forget what I'm doing. Yeah. But I, I, so we've tried to really, because I don't want to just say I'm going to pray and then not do that. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't want to do that. So um, we try to do that right yeah. away. And then yeah. we have started, um, well, for a while now, we pray every night. And it was funny when you talked about praying, you know, when you're you're angry, because I feel like when we, if we are upset at each other and we start praying, it doesn't, we don't stay angry very long no, because it's, it's hard to be in front of God and also be <laughs> showing gratitude. And that like, it just changes your heart, yeah. you know? It's like, I, I feel my frustration melting away right as I, I pray and have empathy towards Ryan. So right. um now, in the book, yes. you gave some resources for um, for our listeners that are looking to maybe incorporate some of those spiritual intimacy um, items into their their marriage. If maybe you're listening and you don't really know where to start, um, you had said that there are resources at Awesome Marriage, and we will put these links in our show notes. 
And then there's also a couple's scripture challenge that they can look at. There are 15 daily prayers for the husband and for the wife. And then um, also the YouVersion Bible reading plans. You can search Awesome Marriage under plans. So we will make sure those are linked for resources right. for our listeners. Great. Right. Yeah, on awesomemarriage.com, you can just hit the drop down resources and the ones that you mentioned. It'll take, we have, I don't know how many, so many that cover so many different ways. And a lot of them are on, on spiritual growth yeah. that are really. Just to help us, you know, I think our resources help people just begin some really good habits. Yeah. Yeah. That's marriage. so great. Great resources. Perfect. Well, we want to jump into the last the last category of the book here. Take it away, Ryan. Yeah. We wanna <laughs> we wanna we wanna t- talk about this topic of, of sex. And for whatever reason, uh, sex seems to be this taboo topic for people. Right? We we want it to be great, but we don't ever want to talk about it. So then a lot of needs and expectations, you know, are never communicated, which leads to conflict. But in in the book, both of you talk about how communication is really the key to a great sex life. So I I guess what advice would you give to couples to start these conversations? Well, I feel like um, if there's something on my mind that I, you know, I need to talk to him about, about our sexual life. I just bring it up. I mean, I just say, hey, I need to talk to you about something, you know. And uh, usually we can, we're, he's so easy to talk to. I, I, I feel kind of at a handicap telling people about this because some people are just stonewalls when, when you talk to them. But, I mean, just open up. And if you start sharing, maybe they will start sharing what, you know, what's going on with them. Because how do you know what you don't know? You know, how's it going to yeah. get better? Sure. You know, if you yeah. don't talk about it. And we can both be sensitive with one another, you know. And uh, Yeah, and I think valuing when you do that. I right. think that was, and I did, and I think that's important. And I think sometimes as guys, you know, we feel like, we're supposed to know everything about sex, which we don't. I mean, I learned yeah. most of it from the guys in the locker room that were older and found out they had no idea what they were talking about <laughs> later on. Right. And and so, I, but I think we have this kind of deal and to, to learn to value what your spouse says to you about what uh, what she wants, what she needs, what she likes, what she doesn't like. And having that conversation, because honestly, from counseling, most people fight over sex because they're fighting over frequency or something like that. Right. And so that's the only time they talk about it. The only time you're talking about sex is when you're fighting over frequency. That's not going to do any good for your marriage. No, and so right. you, sure. you want those opportunities to say, hey, let's maybe for the next three weeks, we spend, let's set aside 30 minutes over Sunday evening. And let's just talk about it. Let's talk about how we would rate it right now. I always have couples write things on a one to 10 and say, they come up and say, well, we're probably at five. And then, so what would take it to a six? And then the wife can say, well, this would really help me. And the husband would say, well, yeah, I can do that. And I, can you do this? And and I think you need those conversations because I think usually in the actual sexual part of it, guys usually have wider boundaries because if we're visual and we, we kind of just let our minds think about things sexually with our spouse that they probably wouldn't think about without that. And so it's just to talk about that and say, you know, would you be comfortable with this? And, and if your spouse says no or not at this point, you know, respect that. And it's, mm-hmm. again, it's just like anything else in marriage, just talking about it, working about it, and just defining what it is for you. Right. Don't ask your neighbors what their frequency is or some, you know, find right. what it is for you. And I think a lot of those things change the seasons you're in. You know, the mm-hmm. first year without kids, you know, sex relationship can happen all the time. Then you have kids and you're up with them in the middle of the night and that can change us. And so you have to, okay, during this season, Let's talk about this. Couples a lot of times don't like to schedule sex, but certain seasons, I think it helps to do that or another week passes and you haven't. And so, again, putting all those things on the table and talking about them. And I think once you do, uh, we do have a couple of resources on on Awesome Marriage also to help help those conversations. It, It you become something that you really see. I think you'll see your sex life grow. I think you'll see it improve. I think it'll be more meaningful for you. You know, there's a, there's a spiritual component to the sexual relationship. And and I think that Christians can have the Hebrew word dod, which means a mingling of souls. And and I think 
that can happen. And I think it's when, when you're in tune and to know that, that there is that spiritual aspect to it. It's just a very special gift that God has given us. And we want to develop it and embrace it to its fullest. I mean, I don't want to miss out on anything God gives us. Yeah. 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 Me either. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? I mean, why is it so hard for couples to have these conversations? What do you think from a woman's point of view? Um, just believe it or not, just kind of shyness, just kind of being mm -hmm. feeling awkward talking about it. I mean, you know, I guess it's our society, the way we were all brought up or whatever to, you know, it was just such a private thing. And um, I think that's that's probably the bulk of it yeah, for, me, for me and for what I know. I'm yeah, and, and I think even though sex is talked about a lot more now, it's not really talked about culturally in the right. context of a marriage and growing that relationship and, and receiving it as God's gift. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. as some of it, I think, is just making from where you grew up where it was, you know, you're supposed to say pure to marriage, all those kind of to do to talk about sex um, and to translate that into marriage. I mean, and then for the guy, is, is I think just learning to listen to our spouse. And I think as a guy, if I can, if she's willing to talk about our sex relationship and I can listen, she'll op she opens up more. Oh, yeah. yeah. She knows that I'm listening and I'm not just, okay, say that. Okay, now let's have sex. No, I've got to really listen and, and let her know that I've listened to her in that. And so uh, I think it is difficult because most of the couples that I talk about, see in counseling, don't talk about their sex relationship or their spiritual relationship. Mm -hmm. And we talk about those two things probably more in counseling because mm -hmm. they don't, they hadn't talked to them about. And so just helping them learn to open up. When I teach premarital counseling, one of the things I ask the couples is what do they look most forward to in their sexual relationship and marriage? And I have them write it down and then share that with each other. And just to say, you got to talk about this. Yeah. yeah, you got to talk about it because the 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 message we get about sex from the world is not going to give us any of us what we want in a sex relationship in marriage. It just not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I I actually I I love that you said those are the two issues that people talk about because I think they're so closely linked. Sure, mm -hmm. I agree. So good, mm -hmm. Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah. Like and so, like, it's so. I, I mean that. To hear that, it's so you know we've we've always uh, you know Michelle and I have have always thought that of of you know obviously there's a physical it's component like a gift from God, but you it, know? it absolutely when you truly see the gift, you know God created it, mm -hmm. and when it's done God's way, yeah, and and there is such a spiritual component to to sex. It's not just physical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Ryan. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's so good. It's so yeah. good, and you know I think too you can even just. You know, when I said about rating, and so maybe you decide, maybe you say, okay, we figure out what it's going to take to get to a six, and you work on that, and then a few months later, you evaluate it and say, okay, where do we want to go now, and, and what would what would continue to help us grow in that? I don't know if you ever get to a 10, but maybe, but but it's, but it's I think it's yeah. like anything else you learn to change. I know some couples that, that I work with, as they've aged, they've got some health problems, and so it changes a little bit, but that's still an important part of their relationship and so they you just kind of adapt to different things and mm -hmm. uh, just to keep that there's just a closeness that comes with mm -hmm. that that I don't think you get in any other relationship anywhere else yep. and just realize too that you're not always gonna it's not always gonna be great you know there's gonna be times that you just don't want to talk about it you don't want to have sex and that kind of thing but pray about it come back together and you know, at that point, you can yeah, decide mm -hmm. what to do next. Yeah. I love the idea of carving out time to talk about it when you're not, yeah, when things aren't heated, just carving out that time. And it sounds like from what you said that the couples that do that, things improve, you know, carving out that safe. And what I'm hearing yeah. too is maybe having that safety too. I think that's what's really, it sounds like helped you guys and us that knowing that it's a safe environment so we can have those conversations and it's a safe space to have that. It's not going to be judged. It's not going to be criticized, but carving wow. out time to have that safe conversation, rating it, you know, and then like you said, that's, I think that's a great, great exercise for our listeners to do. That's, that's great. Yeah. 
The one other thing I think when I said that about guys having wider boundaries that I always tell couples, I say, it's okay for you as a guy to ask if your wife is comfortable with this, but it's also very much okay for her to say no. And then you accept that. It's not like you've, you know, there's a higher, you know, you're climbing a ladder with your sex life. You're trying to develop something that is awesome for the two of you together. And so it, it again, it's, it's kind of a give and take and learn and grow and, um, it's just a pretty pretty cool thing that God did when he invented that and how yeah. when you really think about it, how our bodies fit perfectly together and, you know, just God's amazing that he would mm-hmm. even give us a gift like that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And it's it's so important to to, I think, you know, to have these conversations to determine what's right for us Mm -hmm. for the two of us and to not not compare or not you you, you know you you talked about frequency and things like that and and it's always like well what's what's right and it's like well there there's not a right answer it's what's right for you you know and what's right for you as a couple and and i think the the world says so much about this topic and and sometimes i think uh we as followers shy away from it but yeah. it's it's so important to have these conversations be mm-hmm. because God created it. Yeah. And and it yeah. is a gift, but it's yeah. it's what's what's right for each of you. Mm-hmm. You know. And he said it was good. Yeah. <laughs> and it was good. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you guys so much for for coming on the show, for being vulnerable, for being honest. As we wrap up, we ask all of our guests three three questions, just sort of rapid fire here. Uh, the first one: what uh, What is your marriage? Why Why is marriage important to you? What do you think? Because it's just the most wonderful relationship you can have, short of your relationship with Christ. Yeah, I mean, where else do you get that kind of mingling of the soul, so to speak? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. It's God's best plan for relationships mm-hmm. outside of a relationship with Him. And so I don't want to miss that. No. Yeah. You know? I love that. That's a beautiful yeah, answer. So beautiful. That was so yeah. well worded. Yeah. Uh, best date night. Mm. Well, I've got one. What do you got? Well, I usually like just staying home and, you know, just watching a movie or, you know, and he's real good at fixing dinner too. Yeah, you so, like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My favorite one happened probably three years into marriage. We uh, built a little home and uh, she called me and asked me to meet her there. And they just poured the slab the day or two before. And so I get there and she has a picnic laid out on the slab. And this was like, this was going to be our first real, our first home together other than Aww. an apartment. And so, and this just always stuck in my mind how creative that was and how special it was. And it was kind of like just, I don't know, just our, our first dinner in that new house that didn't even have anything but the slab at that time, right? Yeah. That's so That's cool. Yeah, what a yeah. special memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, after 53 years, what's bringing you joy in your marriage right now? I think our closer walk with the Lord together. I mean, it's just amazing. And uh, it just makes everything better. It does. And I I, I was going to say more time because we do, yeah. you know, we don't have a, a, lot, a lot. We have distractions, but they're different. And you can control the, we can control the distractions yeah. we have now a lot better than we could. You can't, can, kids are a distraction. They're one of the greatest blessings in marriage, but they're definitely a distraction for marriage. And so, can't really, you know, ship your kids off for a year. So <laughs> you've got. So just having uh, the time that we have and the flexibility we have, and and we've got some. We God's blessed us with some really good friends that are very much like us in their faith and enjoy the things we do. And so we're very blessed to have that in our mar- marriage at this time too. Yeah, we did not really talk about it, but I encourage everybody to you know have Christian friends. Uh, that you can share life with. It's, um, there's nothing better. It's interesting. I think we've had people, sometimes if you may feel like you don't have anything in common with someone, but if they're believers, all of a sudden you you connect and you Mm -hmm. think, wow, 
there, yeah. there's some, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree with that. We're in a yeah. couple's life group and I feel like those relationships are just really oh, special. Yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Dr. Kim and Nancy, where can our listeners keep up with you in the awesome marriage ministry? Um, we're on social media. We do a lot of uh, Instagram together under Awesome Marriages and under mine, Kim Kimberling. Uh, we do some a little bit on TikTok, not as much as we did. That's oh, that's fun. super fun. Look at you <laughs> yeah. guys. And uh, <laughs> that's we've so, done, hip. so we're on all social media, YouTube, and then awesomemarriage.com, and then my website, kimkimberling.com. So any of those, but awesomemarriage.com will lead you to just about everything yeah. we do from the one thing you mail the podcast. It's got everything we do on that. If people, and you know, the, the thing that I love probably the most is the one thing email just because the point of it is I know everybody doesn't read it every day that we send it out, but you know, it's there and it's to help people be intentional about their marriage every day. And yeah. I think if we do that and we try to make it just one thing that's pretty easy to do that day for your marriage. And I think the more we think about our marriage and follow through with those things, the better our marriage gets. Yeah. That's great. Ryan will forward those to me occasionally. Yeah. So that's always yeah. fun to get those. And I just want to say again, um, you know, Ryan talked about just being, you know, grateful that you're on our show, but truly thank you just from a wife's perspective for what you've done for our marriage. And I think Ryan, just to see him so excited for the show today, yeah. it was yeah. like he was getting ready to, and he just, he put so much work into it and we were reading the book and we wanted to honor, you know, make sure that we had it read and just everything to get ready for today's show because he just has so much respect for yeah. both of you and the ministry that you have and what it's meant to him personally. So I just, as the wife's perspective, I just want to say thank you for yeah. pouring into my husband as, <laughs> on, you know, online mentors and we've just met yeah. today, but you've been, you've been a mentor. So thank you for what you've done yeah. for our marriage. That's what we want for everybody. That, thanks. That's, that's really sweet of you guys. Yeah, and, it and it's so cool for us to see you guys doing what you're doing. Yes. Uh, because, you know, there, there'll never be enough of us championing marriage. And that's right. You know, we need everybody in it. And, and marriage is still God's answer. And so when we have a culture that doesn't value it as much, the more we can do to fight that, the better. So we'll be praying for you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you to you, our listeners, for joining us today on the Celebrate Marriage cast. If you would like further help or resources for marriage, we uh, we are going to post the Kimberlines links below, but also you can check out celebrate.church slash marriage. Make sure you subscribe and share this episode with a friend and have a fantastic week. Again, Happy New Year. And thank you, Dr. Kim and Nancy, so much. Thanks, guys. It was a lot of fun. We appreciate Thanks. you. Yeah.